Thank you for tuning in into my channel where you find all about mixed media, art journal, collage, assemblage and anything else that sparks my interest. Hi, my name is Bea Grob and I'm glad you are here. Hey y'all, welcome back to my studio. My plan today, well, I want to do sort of a little transfer painting thingy, upcycling, whatever you want to call it, it's kind of hard. Um, I came across this frame in the thrift store for four francs, nothing really expensive and it's probably, it's not old, it's you know, it's those kind of things that made vintage. It came the way it is, so I know I want to do a painting or a girl in it, uh, so I had to make, make from cardboard sort of the thingy that goes in between. That's actually from a watercolor pad, which is a very heavy cardboard. And I also have some leftover watercolor paper. That's going to be my substrate I'm going to work on. And you can see here all kinds of things too. Like I do have samples of acrylic skins I made. This one I did add a layer of... Um, matte medium this is entirely with gloss medium that's nearly done there is still some paper left I mean here is also still some but I'm not that picky I mean I still could get rid of those but when I do transfers I actually like that uh, milky vintage look that uh, warm look so that's what we're going to work on, we're going to make a transfer. By the way, it's a painting of my own, which I have sold and I thought I want her back. So I made a, a copy on a laser printer. If you don't have a laser printer at home, go with your inkjet copy to a copy shop and let them put it on a laser printer. You can use standard paper and print it on that paper and then you add gel gloss now i'm not somebody who really likes the gloss so in the actual painting i'm gonna go over with matte medium to cut back the shine but it seems to work a little bit better with the gloss medium the transfers or the skins or whatever you want to call it so we're gonna need the gel gloss but we're gonna need the gel gloss also for the antlers and i have here a box of those leftover four gold leaves it's not real gold it is plain metal leaf i'm gonna use the gel gloss for that too and for this part i actually wanted gloss because i don't want to dull down the shine of the metal the thing with those uh, transfers uh, the layers have to dry in between i have like three layers on those things here and i have already two layers on here and i'm gonna show you how i do the last layer the process is always the same, but you need at least three layers to get a decent skin of the words. So, I'm gonna do first my last layer here and then put it aside to dry. And sometimes I speed it up with the heat tool, but uh, in my opinion it is the best when you just let it dry naturally. So I usually work in batches, I do a whole batches of skins and uh, let them dry overnight and work on them the next day. But for the sake of the video that doesn't work so well. Anyway, so I do use the gel gloss. Some people use brush um, and I do work on a silicone or a non-stick surface so that I can easily peel it off. And I try really hard not to get any medium on the back side, but sometimes you can't avoid it. That's why I have the white border around so I can cut it back. Uh, when you have gloss on both sides, gel medium on both sides, it's kind of hard to take off the paper. So, and I apologize my voice. Uh, it's that time of the year again. I'm back to my medication for the asthma and I hope my voice comes back pretty soon. Anyway, so I like to use the spatula and it's a little bit like icing the cake. So 
I try to have not too many strokes, especially not in the face. I'm not so concerned about here in the hair or in the background, but the fa face I really like pretty smooth. So I concentrate first on that and make sure that I don't have any strokes, which sometimes is hard. And I apply a thin layer. Don't make too heavy layer. Don't think you can make one thick layer. It just doesn't work the same. And I look a little bit sideways if I have the medium everywhere. So if my head comes in, I'm sorry, I just have to check. Here we go. Gonna put that aside and maybe or maybe not, I gonna need the heat tool to dry it completely. We'll see. First I'm gonna work on my antlers from the I don't want the ears, I'm actually going to tape them off a little bit. So I'm going to paint off the areas that are close to the antlers, which I don't want in gold. Now, of course, not everybody can find exactly this frame, but even with the plain rectangle frame, you can add four gilding. Now for this I'm going to use a brush that makes it much more easier than uh, with the uh, spot And I just apply the medium. I'm really looking forward if I can go to the thrift stores again. I mean, I'm not, I'm not hurrying it. I'm just, but I really like to go to the thrift store and find stuff which I can upcycle or use it for something else. Or just trying to figure out what it was for. <laughs> Sometimes, okay. Now I have the gel medium everywhere and. Um, I'm gonna grab a piece of paper, which the leftovers that should work, so that I can pour it into the container again. And I just grab a bunch and tap it on. Okay, I put that aside to dry a little bit. And clean up. My piece is still drying. There are some white clouds here, means it's not quite dry. In the meantime, I'm gonna work on the background and um, First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to apply a little bit of gesso through a stencil. Hmm. Yep. I'm going to use a scratch piece of paper. So 
so that I don't have to clean so much. <laughs> Okay, that's enough for that. Okay, there was something blue. <laughs> Wasn't planned that way. Oh well. Now I'm gonna in with the green gold from Golden. And I'm gonna spray a little bit. And I use the same sponge I have used before. I think I'm gonna go also in with some teal. Now I have this stencil here with little dots and I'm thinking I want some gold in the painting itself too. So I'm gonna grab my metal foils again and this time I think I'm gonna use a brush. Let that dry too. And while that's drying, I'm gonna clean my stencil. I don't like gel or gesso on my stencil. I don't mind paint so much, but gel and gesso and um, modeling paste, I do clean right away. Now let's see whether our uh, deer is ready. I do use a soft brush to get rid of the loose parts. And I probably didn't have everywhere the gel because there are places where there is no foil. But I actually don't think that's a big deal. So I'm gonna let that dry again a little bit now that I have a big portion off it has better chance to dry and then I go in again and cover up everything with the gel medium. I do have this stamp here which I want to a little bit. It's, it's about the face, the quote, but my goal is not to read it completely, completely. Just some background noise. Now I want to get rid of the paper. I do spritz and scratch a little bit so that the water has a chance to soak in. gonna zoom in now oh, I have to work right here okay there already it is dark there is already the water soaking into the paper and now I can start uh, pulling off paper I would recommend to make some samples first it's um, and make be aware that it doesn't always work as planned so that's why I usually do more than one then I pick the one I like the most now I'm probably gonna speed up the whole process a bit just to save you some time and here is a spot where the gel seeped over on the underneath and it's kind of hard to get rid of that so I actually gonna cut back right away. It's a relatively thin skin. You can actually tear the skin if you are not careful. So it's balanced between adding some force and being gentle with it.
Now, instead of uh, like I do, uh, copying my own paintings, you could use like photos from your children or your grandchildren or even landscapes work. Now, how much you remove is also a little bit up to you. Uh, if you leave a, still a little paper pulp, the really fine paper pulp, it gives sort of a muted look. It's, it's a little bit hazy, which can be nice too. But I really want, especially the face, I really want to make completely clear. And you can sort of feel it when there is no longer paper pulp under your fingers when you rub it. It is much smoother and your finger glides really easily. Okay, so it is a very thin, flexible piece of plastic basically. I'm going to add some hot pink here in this area. I'm going to use the Liquitex matte medium to attach her. Make sure that I don't have air bubbles. And now I'm going to add also the Liquitex matte on top to break down the shine. I really don't like it so much. Now I also want to use the modeling paste. I want to overlap the transfer and my paper. Now that has to dry completely and again I would let it dry overnight. Now the antlers and the picture is pretty much dry. I mean it is dry. <laughs> so the last step is going to be I'm going to seal uh, the metal leaf with some gel gloss and at the same time I get rid of those bits and pieces which may still hang around. And I like to seal the metal foil. So that it's um, a little bit protected from tarnishing. It's not real gold, it's going to tarnish if you leave it. And I actually should take a little bit out, otherwise I'm going to have metal flakes everywhere. And for that I really use the gloss because that would be a kind of a waste if I Use all that shiny metal and then add some matte medium. <laughs> Wouldn't make sense, would it? And as I said, there are still places where I didn't put in the gel medium. So there is still the grey peeking too from the original, but I kind of like that. It looks a little bit distressed. I think that is it for the antlers. That has to dry again and then um, I will have a photo montage at the end. As usual the colors and the lightening isn't very accurate in the video itself. Now for the uh, stenciling with the modeling paste, my idea behind was, was I want to add some um, metallic waxes. That's a gilding wax from PBO. There are a lot of brands out there. I just put a little bit on my uh, finger and I test it first on a piece because I don't want too much. Just a little bit. I still want to see some of the white. And yes, popped also ends up on the painting itself, but uh, that's not a big deal for me. I want to buff the wax a little bit so that it is get more shiny. 
The best would be a cloth towel. I'm just using now a uh, paper towel. I'm gonna add also a little bit to the frame. Okay, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this little video and I hope to see you soon again. Take care, bye!